So one increase your potassium, the other one decrease it. So we have a good doctor who decided this guy increases your potassium and this guy decreases your potassium. So we good, equal, golden, I'm fine with it. So I don't need to see you. Okay, it's not a bad, I don't need to intervene. I don't need to do anything. Okay, the potassium is going to be normal. I'm trying to get you cardiac farm down, like all the way down. Client on lactin and potassium of that. You want to see this patient? You say, don't come near me. What do you want to do? Say, don't come near me. His potassium is low. You, want, you, you don't want to see the patient? Yeah, just like 3.5, it's about to go down. Yeah, spinolactone increases your potassium. So it's not going down anywhere. We'll be fine. A client on a nalopril and a peak T wave on an EKG. Uh, a client on a nalopril and a peak T wave on the EKG. So this patient is waiting for you to say something. He's already have a peak T wave. That means he has what? High potassium. Then we put them on a nalopro. That is also increase your potassium. Well, we're we, we doing what? We're killing the patient? Yeah, we got to do something. So we got to see this patient. Two hyperkalemia situation, not good. The client on a nalopro, I'm still hitting the area. And necklace does not fit for the past three days. He take um, enalopro, but his necklace that he love never fit anymore. What do you want to do, doctor? What do you want to do? Okay, you buy the patient another necklace. She will love that. Yeah, we got to buy another necklace. Yeah, you have to see this patient. That's angioedema. Another way of asking angioedema. Or they will say something about the tongue. The tongue is too big. Or he's drooling because his tongue is too big. Yeah, this patient is waiting for you to say, stop your uh, enalopro and we will give you what? ARB, okay? We got to tell you to oh, ARB, the satans, Lord satans. The client on enalopro, once again, and three weeks pregnant. She's about to have the baby. What do you want to do, doctor? <laughs> we just talked about this already. ACE inhibitor is tetragenic. So baby is going to have agenesis, uh, renal agenesis. It will destroy the kidney. The kidney will not develop. It's tetragenic. So we have to see that patient. We have to see. You have to know these medications. So avoiding pregnancy. These are all the teaching you provide. I just take them and flip them and make them make you more friendly for you so that you can know, okay. A client on Law Satan, this is ARB. And avoid banana, oh, I did not say. And, and avoid banana, and avid, sorry, yes. The, it's supposed to be avid banana eater. So he eat a lot of banana, sorry. Avid, yeah, that's it. Supposed to say avid. That means he eat a lot of banana. What do you think? Do you see that patient? He's on low satan and he eat a lot of banana. So, Lord Satan is ARB. ARB is the same as ACE inhibitor without cough and angioedema. So, all the side effects of ARB and ACE inhibitor are equal, except they don't cough, they don't have angioedema because of the pathway. It does not block, it blocks certain angiotensin level 
So that's why this is okay. I don't want to go there, but that, there's a place where it block and it destroy Brady Cannon. Cough and this all by Brady Cannon because it's in better allowed that. ARB doesn't do that. Therefore, this causes what? Hyperkalemia. It's also teratogen. Those are the two side effects of ACE inhibitor ARB will take. So hyperkalemia and teratogen. If you eat a lot of banana, yeah, your potassium go, will go up. And then if you take a lot of sartan, your potassium will go up. So you will, you have to see this patient. I'm not, it's not avoid, uh, it's avid. I'm uh, sorry, I make a mistake, but we can tell, if you say avoid, yeah, then that's fine. But I was going to write avid. That means he eat a lot of banana. That was what I was trying to say. But if you answer no, that means you're using the word avoid banana, but that's fine. If they avoid it, it's good. But if they eat a lot of banana, yeah, it's not good. Any questions so far? 20. Let's see what we have. A client on digoxin and a creatinine of 2.5. This one is no brainer, right? We talk about the digoxin side effect. The kidney clear digoxin. 2.5 is not good. You're going to have high level of digoxin. Therefore, you should see this patient. You titrate, you make sure you hold it, you make sure. Is getting cleared. A client on digoxin and dry hips with aura intake. So you feel like you want to vomit. Every time you eat, you have dry hips. What does that tell you? Early signs of GI toxicity. You should see this patient. He's having early signs. They won't give you all the clue, they will give you something little. But that's why dry hips. When it, whenever I take PO, they feel like you want to vomit. A client is an infant on digoxin, an apical pulse of 91. I want to see who's going to see this patient or not. 23. Do you want to see this patient? It's an infant in a digoxin, apical pulse of 91. We said it in the beginning. The digoxin level, less than 60, less than 70, less than 90. This is for infant, this is for a child, this is for adult. These are heart rate, epical pause, epical pause. This is when you hold it for adult, child, and kid. I said 91, this is 91. It's not 90. So I'm fine with this patient. They will do that. They will put one point above it to see if we will fall for it. It's still not 90. So I'm not picking it. Okay. So a client on digoxin for CHF and the feather pain for hypertension. Think, 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 think. I got you thinking. I love pharmacology, so you can see how I can make questions that will trap you. But this is cardio farm. If you know everything here, there's no cardiology question that will beat you. This patient, do you want to see? He said, don't touch me. The joxin, the feather pain. I told you, avoid calcium channel blocker for the joxin. So why do you want to take the feather pain for hypertension? We need to intervene and change this to something else. So the joxin doesn't go well with calcium channel blocker. That's the feather pain. You have to recognize two medications to be able to answer the question. All the digoxin question, I want to hit it so that when you see it, you know that, oh, I saw it. I saw it before. I know what it's trying to do. A client on digoxin and a potassium of 4.5. What do you think?
4.5. Wow, that's like high normal. What, what, what am I going to do with this? Yeah, this is fine. It's a normal. You have to know your normal level. 4.5 is okay. The joxin, I told you, maintain the potassium normal. Don't decrease it. We don't want to decrease it. We don't want to decrease magnesium. We don't want to increase the calcium. You should avoid this. When you see this, the, the way you should be asking yourself is the way they ask the question. But when you see that, they should be saying avoid. But what should you do? Keep them normal. Don't increase it. Don't increase the magnesium. Don't decrease the calcium. Don't de uh, increase the potassium. Keep them normal. Okay, so I don't need to see that patient. His potassium is fine. So this I don't need to see. We need to see these patients. We don't need to see it. We need to see this patient. We need to see this patient. Okay, almost done. Oh, 15 more. Wow, we're still going. A client on the Philippine and a flawed skin with leg edema. He's on calcium channel blocker. His skin is flushed with a leg edema. We got to fix him, right? Do you want to see this patient intervene? What do you think? Should we intervene? What is calcium channel blocker? I see calcium channel blocker as a um, nitrate. They are the same as nitrate. They dilate your vein. So if this is your vein, they make it bigger like that. So blood is going to pull all over. If blood pool in your leg, what would you do? Give you edema. If blood pool in your face and your leg, what do you think? You give you flawed skin. There's so much blood in your face. So that is an expected finding for a calcium channel blocker patient. If they're taking it, you're taking nitrates, I expect leg edema from pooling, and then your skin is always flush. Don't worry about it. Okay, those are all things that can happen. It's not a big problem, right? So we don't need to see that patient. The client on nitroglycerin for angina and headache. He has headache. He has headache. He's waiting for you to help. That is the same thing. Blood is going to pull in their head and they get headache. That's an expected finding. So you don't need to see. It's also a nitrate. A client on nitroglycerin with patch staying on for 18 hours daily. Do you want to see that patient? He doesn't want to have angina. That's why he's keeping the patch on for 18 hours. Yes, you should see that patient. They should have it on for 12 to 14 hours. No more than 14 hours. Otherwise, it will not work anymore. 12, and it will have rebound problem. 12, 14 hours is the limit. They take it off. So we should see this patient. The client on nitro patch and no shower for seven days due to the patch. It does not want to wet. It does not want to wet the, this thing. What do you want to do? Patient does not want to wet the pouch, the patch. So he said, I'm not bathing for seven days. He's not happy. He said, we put a patch on and uh, I'm not bathing because I don't want to wet it. I'm afraid I should, I should not bath. You're not supposed to bath with the patch. Negative, you can bath. You can bath with the patch, please bath. Okay, clean yourself. So you tell them, it's okay. It's okay, so we gotta see them. There's nothing wrong with it. You can take a bath, shower with the patch. A client on norepinephrine, dopamine for sepsis and black dry gangrene toes. The toes is all blue, black, and it's dry. 
is taking norepinephrine and dopamine for sepsis. It's in sepsis shock. Do you want to see that patient? So that's what you expect. Sepsis with this, this are our vessel constrictors. They constrict your vessel. When you septic, they direct blood away from the extremities to the most important. That's why we use it to maintain your blood pressure and perfuse your brain and your heart. Their toe is going to get black. And it's this are what we call dry gangrene. It's okay. Don't worry about it. It will fall off. Unfortunately, it sounds mean that that is like that's what happened when you're on no epinephrine and dopamine. If you go to the floor, you start working in the ICU, and you have a patient on the, on presses, dopamine and no epinephrine. They, you start you see that their toes start turning blue. That tell you their disease is getting worse and worse and worse. Um, it, it's something we expect to happen. We don't worry too much about it. It just tell us that we, we the patient is on high dose of medication. We can try to titrate it down, but is what it is. We're trying to save their life. Something has to give. So this is usually normal. Something you will see. Um, or, or, of course, if you see between four patients, I will know. Make sure there is no airway breathing problem or circulation, something bad, like a B-sharp moment. But this is an expected finding to be, to you're told to be blue and black and it's dry, dry gangrene. It's not wet um, when you're on um, this medication. So that's okay. 